All right, well, um, welcome to week four. And I'll share my screen here so you can see it. Oops, there we go. Week four. Can everybody see my screen okay? Okay, great. I'm trying to arrange a guest speaker this week who uh, is a professional Adobe Flash developer. His name is uh, Caden. So that's what this is. He's developing a mobile application that's built in Flash. So this week, we don't have any assessment built you know, based on text reading. Uh, it's just a game, Brandon. Um, I think it's a, uh, it's a Chinese word translation game or something like that, where it makes a game out of uh, learning to speak Chinese. It's what we all need to do, right? <laughs> so there's no reading of the textbook this week, and there's no assessment based upon the textbook questions. And this here is a link for you to follow and just watch some tutorials. Just give you a link here to spend some time. It's uh, really for your information only you will not you will not be tested on any of this this week at all however it might give you some ideas to do your assignments the final assessment and here's the reflection hey chip your uh screen is black i don't see anything oh really I mean, I'm not sharing anything. Oh. Huh. Thought I had it shared. It says you're sharing, but I don't. All it says is Chip Brown has started sharing screen, but that's it. Let's see here. I think you might have shared the wrong screen. Okay. Let's see, share a new window. So, is there anything you see right now? Huh. Do you see anything now? Okay. So this is what's shared. If I go over this way, it probably is not sharing anymore. Hmm. How about that? Okay. All right. Do you still see my screen? Uh, no, this is what's shared. It seems like it's... Uh... All right, so you see on the screen right now, week four.
Okay, so this is on screen. Um, let's see. I'm going to try that for now. Came and it's not even working where I can chat in the chat window for some reason. Huh. Um, Dave, I'm trying to respond to your message and and uh, the text. My keyboard's not typing, so give me a second, Dave. I think it's. Supposed to be typing here. Let's see, let me just try this really quickly here. My keyboard is not even typing for some reason. Okay, I'm gonna type in the document. All right, well, let's see how far I can get without typing. Um, my mouse is working. So back to where I was a second ago. These are our learning objectives for this week. Watch online tutorials, hear from a guest speaker, create your animation for your portfolio, and then research a current topic. So that's part two. This is just, there's no reading necessary this week. These are just some tutorials that are for your information, and you won't be tested on that. But it's a link that's available to you. Please do your reflection on the course. Thank you, Sherry. And then here we have the uh, first part of the assessment. Now, I've got really good news. And no, Francis, uh, Liz, I don't have a touch screen. Um, I've got really good news for you. This is the only thing you need to add to your animation this week. I've got to tell you, it's going to be so fast and so easy. In fact, I hope that everybody gets it done here in the next 10 to 15 minutes on theirs. So, um, so that'll be that'll take care of that. And then um, the next part is to do. Oh, let's see. I don't see the other part of the assessment here. There should be a part two. It's right there. I wonder why it didn't go right to it. Let me try that one more time. I'm gonna navigate. I see what you said, Anne Marie. Yeah, definitely, Liz. If you try to make a new one, then you get to you got some work to do. Yeah, there's a paper here. Let me try that again. I thought I navigate right to it. I'm in the section one here. Let's try this. See where it's, oh, there it is. There's the next, okay, good. Yeah, the second part is research report. And um, so the, uh, the research report, you just pick one topic and Let me see if I can preview this here in a way that you can read it well. Um, there's a lot of different places where you can go pick topics. It's, and, and seriously, it's one page. It's one content page, double spaced in APA format. But it's really three pages because you have the first page dedicated to be the title page, and the third page should be your bibliography. So. Just as far as typing goes, one page. Excuse me one sec. <coughs> now, that should be pretty straightforward for you to do. Uh, and everybody um, wonders about how to, what to write on. And let me give you some ideas on what you can write on. Obviously, anything that you, um, discovered that was kind of an aha moment for you this this mod in your work that would be fine you, 
I do want you to um, have some references. So let's do this again. This way I'm going to look at the student view so that I'll see what you're seeing. This is the animation project. And all we have to do is add the uh, stop at the end of the animation so it doesn't loop. And then publish it in uh, SWF or HTML.js. Then create a single zip file to zip it all up. And if you want to do extra credit, you can upload your files, a file, to your online portfolio. Now, if you don't have one, then we can quickly set one up. Simple one. Um, I know how to do them on Wix, and I can even show you how to do uh, custom portfolios on uh, websites. Um, so depending on what your interests are, I can help with that. Now that's extra credit. Now because it's extra credit, it kind of means that you're going to have to do some of the work on your own rather than being told everything how to do and being shown how to do. That's why it's extra credit. Because it's, it's, to a certain extent, it's a little bit outside the scope of what we needed to learn in this class. It goes beyond that to be able to upload your content to a web server. So, um, so you need to be a little more independent with this task, this part of the task, because it is extra credit. You kind of have to earn it rather than being shown in everything how to do it. You're going to have to kind of learn the skill of, of what, what it's about. I'll show you how to do it. And uh, but you're gonna have to prove that you get it in order to get the extra credit, okay? Uh, Liz asked a question Is it okay if we did more than one content page? And definitely, no problem. You will not get marked down if you got more. So, I should put at least three pages rather than at you know, set. Um, okay, so uh, Anne Marie said, sounds interesting and hard. What was it you're referring to? Oh, you're referring to crocodile. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Let's see. Um, hold on. Okay, Kim asked a question, can we use our textbook as a reference for your topic? Uh, yeah, um, let's see, let's make sure I'm not outside the scope here. Um, choose a current topic and anything pertaining to Flash that is interesting to you. So I think that would fit in that category. You can find topics. Yeah, Liz, uh, Liz asked the question, my topic for part two is the significance of Adobe Flash-based uh, advertisement. Is that okay? Yeah, definitely. I love that topic, actually, Liz. It's really, really intriguing. Very interesting. I, now, don't think I'm favoriting Liz. I, I'm favoriting her topic choice. That's a very, very appropriate topic. The fact that she's thinking about advertising and whether or not it's so smart model to use Adobe Flash. So let's look at some other uh, possible topics. Click on this link and uh, scroll through this and see if there's anything in here that you're interested in. Um, this actually, in my opinion, is a really interesting source of very current topics, and that would be the the uh, tw the Twitter page. Whoa, what happened to that? They only have two followers. They've dumped their followers. What happened to all of them? Maybe for things flash related, I think. That's interesting. They used to have a lot of followers. 
and they've dumped all their followers, I guess, or they've moved them. I don't, I don't know if you can move them. Anyways, um, here's the, they created a whole new account. I wonder if Twitter helped them do that, move followers from Adobe Flash Pro to Adobe Flash CC Twitter account. Because that's a lot of followers to, to move. And they used to have them in Adobe Flash Pro. Anyway, so this, in my opinion, the tweets that come from this Twitter page are quite interesting for possible topics uh, of your research paper. You need to scroll down and see if you find something. I shouldn't click on that. Very good source of uh, the latest, in, latest and greatest of stuff going on in uh, Adobe Flash CC. So that's one. And then finally, uh, the Facebook platform. Here they have, uh, here you have another very similar set of um, posts. It looks like they are keeping the two in sync because I'm recognizing these. So either or. Um, Anne-Marie asks a question. We can find this link in the readings, right? Uh, Anne-Marie, it's right here in the description of Final Assessment Part 2. These are the links right there. Does that answer your question? Okay, good. Now, I want you to propose this topic and uh, that way I can give buy off on, on that. It says cite three or more references. So that's, that's a lot. So um, hopefully you're good on that. Okay, any questions about the final assessments parts one and two? It's due at the end of this week, midnight Saturday night. It's worth 90 points. It says no due date, but we all know that it is due. Okay, Kim asked a question, what does this mean? Propose the topic using the class email system. What that means is just send me an email using the inbox. Don't, don't send it to me via uh, my email address. It just says log in and um, go to the inbox and compose an email like this. Select your course and then to me and click teachers, click me, and then say uh, proposal. My email's not working, or my text, my um, keyboard's not working. Anyway, you type that in and send it to me, okay? Does that help? Does that answer your question, Kim? Uh, James asked a question. Uh, uh, do all of the reference need to be ProQuest stuff? And the answer is no. There is no requirement for these references being ProQuest. That was only a requirement for last week's discussion. Does that answer your question, James? Okay. Now, Brandon uh, asks a question, how about animation of logos for a topic? That's a great topic. Really, really great topic. It's so interesting that the topic of animating a logo is, I think, quite interesting for branding. And so often, logos are just 2D pictures. But nowadays, with websites and with the 
experience of uh, your customers coming to your website and um, you know the branding being an issue um, it's it's such, that's such an interesting topic because because companies have not really all gone after the idea of an animated brand so it may be because People think it's cheesy. Um, animated logo. Let's just see. Oh, my huh, keyboard's not working. That would be a really interesting topic because, frankly, um, I think it's quite controversial. It, it, meaning, um, there are probably some real industrial, some real reasons in industry that uh, companies choose not to. Um, definitely it could work on a website. I agree, Kim. Um, but for example, you go to Google, this is what they do to their brand. It's quite interesting. They create a, uh, they create an animated, uh, sometimes you click on these and, and you see an animation or a link or, you know, they take their bro, their logo of Google, G O G L E. And they, they change it, change it up every day. So um, it's quite an interesting task. But if you go to websites like Yahoo or, or Google or IBM, I don't think you will um, I don't think that you will find many animated logos. So I think that would be an interesting one. Okay, so Kim Kim asked the question: Do I send that a proposal to you in the inbox rather than the drop-down box? Uh, yes, Kim, I prefer the inbox just because uh, the email system will track it that way. Does that answer your question, Kim? Okay, Kath. Catherine asks the uh, question. I have a question because I may be confused. If we just add the story name, audio, and credits at the end, do we need to start a new deal for week three? We got full credit. Excuse me. <coughs> um, no, <clears throat> you're supposed to. If you got full credit, don't worry about it. You can. Uh, Just use the same one. Um, I, I'm going to have to change. I don't want anyone to have that same question, so I'm going to have to change this assignment because if it confused you, it might confuse other people. Um, hold on. Can't ask the question, did my battery die on the keyboard? No, no, there's no such thing as a battery for the keyboard. I'm, I have it just, it's all on my laptop. It would get its, uh, you know, in the, in the context of a game, you know, it makes sense to animate logos. But in the context of a website, I don't know so much. Kim asked the question, why do I need it tracked? It's just because I don't always know if you make a if you make a post to the uh, to the Submission inbox Dropbox Kim. I don't receive notification as as I do. So sometimes I don't know it's there. Does that answer your question, Kim? That's why I prefer the inbox proposal. Actually, I'm starting to get notifications from Dropbox um, comments. So 
It's just I haven't yet gotten the warm fuzzy that that's always dependable. Hello, Lydell. Um, Kim asked a question, so I just need to add that script thing that makes it stop looping, right? And that's correct, Kim. Oh, okay, I understand about the keyboard thing. Kim asked, mentions, um, Definitely a good idea. See, that's not only animated, that's also got audio. And I, I, I just love the idea of, of an animated logo with audio, and especially for game development. That makes so much sense. And you put that right there on your DVD when you, you – Download the uh, the game and watch an animated logo, which also has sound effects. It's really a cool, cool idea. You know, um, we have a logo class, and and it'll be interesting because someday we might be able to add to that logo class creating animated logos. Yeah, James says he's made animated splash screens for all the games that he started making. It makes it interesting right up front. Josh asked a question, how do you do the stop deal? I've got to get to that still, Josh. Okay, let's work on, I think everybody's got questions. We're just chatting some. And so the, the way to add a stop to your animation, here we go, is using a code snippet. I'm going to try Melissa's here. All right. Here's an animation. Step number one is add a new layer. We can call it actions. Oh, my uh, keyboard. Okay. I'm not able to rename it, but that's okay. And here, we click to the very end. Ins let's see here. Let me grab the code snippet. All right. Quick window, code snippets. OK. So let me, let me do that again. Add a new layer. Jump to the end, click on the frame, window, code snippets. Here's the code snippets panel. Okay. Now, there are two different sets of code snippets. And, and this is actually a good demonstration. See, I don't need to code do the coding because that's what that's what code snippets are for. No need to code. 
Now, there's two different sections here in the code snippets. Now, when it says code snippets, it's referring to interactive code. Now, the, the scope of this class is not, it's really the next class that we're going to go over coding and using more of the code snippets rather than just, we're just going to use one today just to kind of get what your appetite for um, how to do it, how to use code snippets and um, what your appetite for your next class. If you're in the bachelor's program, you can take another, you'll take two more classes actually, one that will do the uh, interactivity uh, and coding and then one more that will do, do putting it all together into a game. So that's how that works. Okay, my last question, the code snippets are how you make something like a start button too, aren't they? Well, the code snippet is actually for the interactivity. So uh, so right here, we got two different types. The first type is for action script. And that's been the historical scripting language that has gone accompanied with Adobe Flash. And that is, action scripting requires, let me see, I'm gonna test your knowledge. And uh, if you'd like, you can uh, just send your answer to me privately so I can see your answer. I'm gonna test your knowledge. This one requires something to be present and this one requires something to be present if you're what does this if you use this coding language what does that mean you're going to create what format output format and what needs to be present for it to work So let me ask that question again. If we do action scripting, what does that mean regarding the environment that you're going to need? Here's a hint. If I create an SWF file for my output, what has to be present on the computer where I am going to watch the SWF. That's right, Brandon. That's right, Lydell. That's perfect. Yes, Kim. Yes, Dave. Well, a little more specific, Dave. Okay, not not exactly, Josh. Well, there's a, the SWF file needs something to be installed. Good, Dave. Good correction. Something needs to be installed on the person's computer in order for them to view your SWF file. Okay. Has anybody heard of the Adobe Flash Player before? The Adobe Flash Player is what's necessary if we create SWF files. For some reason, my I used to be able to just go, go back and forth. And I can't go back and forth. I can't do Alt Tab. Anyways, the SWF file requires the Adobe Flash Player. But if we create an output file of HTML and what else? Um, HTML and what else? Then what type of program can read our HTML files? Is 
That's right, Kim. Any what, Dave? That's right, Brandon. So in, in addition to HTML, if we have any kind of motion going on, we need another output file. What is that other output file? HTML goes along with another file, which is a, does anybody know? Close and, that's right, Dave. It's a JavaScript file. JavaScript. So, um, the JavaScript. Oh yeah, Dave. Dave told everybody <laughs> that was an accident, right, Dave? <laughs> It's okay. It's easy to do. Yeah, JavaScript is the other type of file that gets created. Uh, HTML is good for the Canvas uh, element, and, but if it's going to be interactive or if it's going to be any kind of motion, then that will generate a JavaScript file. And so when we, have, when we start off with a... Um, when we start off with one of these HTML5 Canvas files, then where we're headed is for generating an HTML5 and JavaScript file. If we go here, uh, then where we're headed is pretty much uh, going to generate the SWF file. Um, but, okay, so Adobe Flash is catering to both right now. And it's because it's in a transition period. because ActionScript is kind of going, and Adobe Flash, you might think Adobe Flash, but, but having a, a programming language called ActionScript, uh, it's kind of, and it's, it's proprietary, meaning it belongs to a company. It's proprietary to um, Adobe. And, and that's kind of going away, maybe in the long term, and JavaScript will eventually replace it. There's, uh, I think, uh, ActionScript or Adobe Flash actually comes built in with a uh, JavaScript tool environment built right into it now. Uh, I meant to say Adobe Flash. So now Adobe Flash is handling both the ability to process ActionScript and the ability to process JavaScript. And if you remember the assessment from last week, where I was asking questions about that, about the fact that there is a built-in engine, JavaScript engine now built into Adobe Flash's uh, this environment that will help us generate and edit and work with JavaScript. So Adobe Flash tool is catering to both the ActionScript developers, which is very similar to JavaScript, and the JavaScript developers. And so because they're catering to both, they're letting you, they're providing you code snippets for both. Okay? So, so the breakdown of these code snippets, it's not necessarily going out of style. It's just kind of because it's proprietary and because Steve Jobs was so so influential with his opinions about Adobe Flash. It definitely has uh, put Adobe Flash kind of on its heels. The problem is JavaScript doesn't have in and of itself all that the Adobe uh, ActionScript components came with because all these different things that you can do, all these code snippets and some built-in things you can do in Adobe Flash with ActionScript that you can't do with, um, with just JavaScript. However, Adobe Flash has uh, teamed up with that CreateJS uh, uh, website. That is open source, see it right here? They've teamed up with, with that group now. And so to a certain extent, Adobe is relying upon this project, this CreateJS project, which is open source, which means 
it's not proprietary to Adobe. It's like anybody can download it, anybody can change it and improve it. And so, so this is kind of where things might be headed. This CreateJS is open source, it's free, and they use it to incorporate it right into Adobe Flash in order to, to cater to both ActionScript and, and JavaScript. And so we have all this, all this JavaScript uh, components built right into here. So they're catering to both. Um, so if you have the uh, ActionScript file, and then here's the breakdown of the different code snippets, the different types of things you can do. What it means is you can drag and drop these things into your, into your actions layer, and, um, and it will create, it'll bring the code right into it. So um, the one that we're focused on is this one right here within this category, timeline navigation, and there it is right there, stop at this frame. So let me see if, um, If, if you just double click it, it puts the action into an action uh, window. And then um, while we're in the action window, we're in action window, we can uh, close the action window by toggling F9. And Well, let me make sure I, I'm not sure if I can do this without uh, keys or, or not. So actions in frame 75, and this is the code. See, now it's there twice, so I'm gonna delete the, uh, see my delete's not working. So frame 75, the actions, and here's the code. And all it is is a stop. Now this, you can ignore this because that's commented out. This is the only thing, meaning commented out means this is the comment, a slash followed by an asterisk. All these words, they're there, but they're only for you to read. And then this is the close comment, open comment, close comment. So technically you can even delete that. It's not obstructing anything. This is outside the comments and therefore that is what is in play. All right. I don't know if my uh, insert a line keyframe and now You know you you know you've got it right if there's a little tiny a right there. Okay, I'm gonna get this right here. Takes my keyboard's. Can so, can somebody else uh, try that where they? Because I'm not able to back it up and get it right in there and I'm trying to, and I don't want to re, I'm going to have to probably restart my computer and I'm going to try to do this without having to restart the computer. Okay, Brandon's got it. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Go ahead, Brandon. You can start sharing. Okay, there, yeah, that's it. Good. See that little A right there? Everybody? That little, that little A on the keyframe, what that means is that there's some action script on this keyframe. So just don't click on that A. Right. Right. We got it selected. Now F9 bring up the actions window. There it is. 
Wow. Let me tell you something about this. Okay. So all you did is. Chef broke the derby record, too. He ran the second fastest derby. He ran the second fastest Christmas ever. We were right there with the red horse. Right. And now we're getting ready to run the longest of the triple crown race. Somebody's watching sports. My girlfriend's watching TV. You can mute me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, can you can you back up and then do that again? Because you probably just did the things that I did. Yeah, I just went to Action Script Timeline while I was on this one right here and double clicked on this. Yeah, that's it. See? And I F9 it. And there was the A. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, go ahead and run it. Well, I, on this or the, the uh, Swift file? Uh, you can run it here. It's just stop. Like, or else you can, maybe we need to do the output. Say what now? Yes, that's right. You just pressed F9. F9 brings up that window and toggles it on and off. Yes. So it should just do it once. Oh, nice screen there. No, but it keeps playing the music. It only plays it once, but it keeps playing the music. Okay. Let's see. The music keeps going, eh? Uh huh. See. Hey, go down to the audio and video and the section. No, uh, in the action script. Just go down there. Okay, hey, go on. Click the second one down. Click to stop all sounds. Before you double click that, select the keyframe again. Life is a journey. I wonder if we need to. Let's see. Turn that down. This action requires an object to be selected on the stage. Um, I wonder if it's just because it's an action that needs to be tied to, uh, tied to a... Do I need to do the, put, use it here? Yeah, I don't do think so, but go ahead and try that uh, because action scripts are supposed to be uh, just on the action layer. So... Um, once you click OK, let's go and uh, is there an object that's on your, let's see, at that time, is there any object on the stage? Let's see. Try, try, to, try the one just above it. Click to play, stop sound. Uh, over there, the, the snippet, the code snippet on the right. Sure, try that one. How would you be selected on the stage? I need to go this one again. So let's try that again. Same thing. And I'm wondering if that has to do with. Uh, I wonder if we have to give a name and instance to your uh, to your your audio track. So what you said is it just kept playing and looping. No, it didn't loop, but it just kept playing past where the movie is supposed to stop. Uh, I know you can't hear it because I've watched the recordings and it don't say the show the sound unless I'm doing showing an actual Swift file. Um, your video. Oh, I know. Maybe you truncated the video. Um, I mean, your audio track probably goes further, but you've only. Would you agree? The, the the song is longer than the video, a lot longer. Okay. 
I think that might be what's going on here. Um, but wouldn't that just stop it? Like when the movie is supposed to stop, it should stop the music. No, no, I don't know why it doesn't. You know, I would expect that too. Um, let's see. James is recommending that you make another action layer. Um, you can add one more action layer if you want, and we could do the same thing. <laughs> Click on that one uh, last frame. I don't think this is going to work, but give it a try. Which one? Uh, click, try to stop all sounds. Just try that double click. Now I'm nope. kind of thinking that what's going on here is that it needs to be associated with an object uh, on the stage. Um, is there any object on your stage at this point, or are you just into uh, the only object on the stage at that point should be the music. Everything else just stops besides the the end credits. And I don't even think that shows F past uh, this right here before it ends. Why don't you click the stage and see if there are any objects currently on your stage? Use your select tool. Is yeah. Let's see. Click on properties up there, upper upper right. Uh -huh. Right there. Okay. Currently, it just says document. Let's see. Click on your music layer again. That's the frame. Let's see. Um, why don't you, in the Actions 2 uh, layer, why don't you add an object on the screen? You could even be like a black circle or something. Um, And uh, let's see, so it's an object. I wonder if it has to be an instance. So once you convert that to a symbol, or you go ahead and select it. Let's just start with selecting that as an object. And now, now try to do, now I've tried to do that to call, or the, uh, yeah. Oh, well, it's got the whole thing highlighted. Is that gonna make a difference? I don't know just yet. Why don't you double click on click to stop all sounds because now we got an object selected. Movie clip in order to apply a code snippet. Okay, flash record creating this name. Applying the code snippet. Okay, so what it's saying is it wants this thing that we're selected on. To be uh, a movie clip. Right, so go ahead and convert it to a movie clip. Hey, I think that worked. Did did you click F8? Uh, no, I just clicked OK. And oh. it brought it up. It and converted it, it to By itself. the way, you can delete lines 9 through 14 because that's a double. Yeah, I was just. In fact, yeah. OK. All right. So <laughs> I, think, I think it's happy now. Um, Oh, I was going to explain that code to you if you want to know. I don't know. Maybe you don't want it. Okay. Now, this is going to get really technical. And what I'm going to go into right now is actually all you need is what we're going to learn next mod that we do Flash. But I'm going to give you just a really quick little teaser right now so that you uh, kind of can start thinking about it. Um, what this is, is there is a, on line 13, that first thing there, movie clip underscore one, it needed something to, to tie this uh, function call to, which is the add event listener. And that which is in parentheses are actually what are called parameters. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, this thing on our stage, we want to, we want to attach to it um, a particular action, like a behavior, like an event. It's, um, and that's what 
it's saying add event listener. And the first thing that is in the parameters are actually two parameters within those parentheses. There's the left parenthesis and it says mouse event dot click. What that means is I want you, this thing on the stage, I want you to become sensitive to the mouse being clicked. And now um, mouse event is the general name. The click is the specific thing of the mouse event that we're going to be paying attention to. So we're kind of saying, okay, movie clip underscore one, we want you to be on the lookout and be prepared for the mouse to be clicked. Now, in the case that you detect, it's kind of it's like a smoke alarm, really. You know, like you have smoke alarms that just sit there and monitor waiting for smoke. Same thing that we're doing here. And um, we're saying in the case that you detect the mouse being clicked, then I want you to jump to this location. And that's with that FL underscore click to stop all sounds. That's just the name that they, that they made up. And it's the place for the code to jump to. And that is actually their line 15 is the definition of that particular thing for it to do. And it's called a function declaration. And it actually goes, the name of it, the descriptor is there in line 15, but it actually goes line 16 through line 18 is actually the body of that function. And so it says, okay, in the case you detect a click, from happening, I want you to jump to this function, and so and when you jump to that function, it then we're going to pass on to that function the type of event that it detected, and that's what the parameter is: event colon mouse event. That means tell me what triggered you to come visit this function, and that will be the click event that will in this case, and then uh, the void means it's uh, it's a a return type of void and then in the case that that occurs then we jump to line 17 and that says hey sound mixer hey the thing the object here that has to do with all sound I want you to stop everything well, that's that's a that's, that's a description of all this that's going on the good news is it all it did it all with a code snippet we didn't have to know any of that so go ahead and try it now let's see if that solves it Oh, we're going to have to make that. Yeah, I'll move it. Now, did it top, did it stop all sound? Not sure. I haven't got to the end yet. And it's still going. The music's still going. Music's still I clicked on the, the circle and it stopped. Oh, oh, see that? It's the mouse event. It waited. It was told. It was told to wait for the mouse event, and and sure enough, it waited and waited and waited. And then when you clicked, then it says, "Aha! The smoke has occurred." And now mm. I call that function. So that's that's exactly what happened. Um, I'll move it down here and put mute in the middle of it. <laughs> yes, you could do that. Um, make a button out of it. Uh, what I'm trying to think is uh, if there's if we could tie this action to uh, something else going on, like being in frame frame uh, 393 or something like that could be the trigger of this, uh, the event that, you know. Well, it stops on its own. Yeah, okay. Well, I gotta, I gotta call it a night because I need to run to the airport. So tonight we'll pick up uh, six o'clock. Anybody can come and uh, with their questions. I'll see what I can do. I'm working on this to figure out what other kind of, uh, event we could uh, make happen. I mean, it could be like an event that it, it, if, if the animation hit frame number 393, we throw an event and then that causes it to, anyways, I'll do some more research on that. Okay? Okay. All right, now I need to figure out how to, how to stop everything so I don't. Uh, <laughs> because you can't use your keyboard. Right. Anyways, okay. Um, 
All right, everybody. Thanks for, for uh, showing up, and we'll see you tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Eight for me. I'll try and make it. I don't know if I can. All right.